Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of I Am Penja, welcome to Automa Chef, which is a game all about building production lines in kitchens in order to produce lots of different meals for people in the restaurant that have ordered them. And what we're doing is, we're doing away with humans in Automa Chef. We don't want humans in our kitchens, humans are too troublesome in our kitchens it seems, because humans have needs, they want things like time off and sick leave and pensions and all that kind of stuff, and we've got no time for that. So we are just going to do everything with robots and machines. So there's going to be machines producing food, there's going to be robots moving the food around, there's going to be conveyor belts to move stuff around, and we've got to make sure that all this is working as effectively and efficiently as possible in order to get those meals out from the kitchen to the restaurant in a timely manner so everybody is happy. I mean, it's got robots and it's got food. Which is just brilliant because I like robots and I like food. So what's not to like? I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this. It looks brilliant. It's launching in summer 2019. I don't think there's a date set as of yet. And we got given a key to this by the developers. So we can bring you this a little bit early. So that's lovely by them. So thank you very much developers. However, this is not the finished version. So we know the sort of drill by now. So things might look a bit different. There might be things that are not quite working right. And it's not representative, entirely representative anyway, of the finished version that you might see when the game is released. So there we go. We know the drill with all that anyway by now. So I think without any further ado, let's just have a go at the campaign mode. Okay, I've done the tutorial levels just to kind of get a vague idea of what's going on. And this is our first proper level where I suspect tutorial robot will not be holding a hand. But okay, I'm sure we'll be absolutely fine. So we need to have 10 orders fulfilled. We need to keep the power usage less than 500 wattage hours, possibly. I don't really know what the word stands for. Whatever, power usage less than 500. And we need to use fewer than 40 ingredients. We've got 50 grand as a budget. And recipes to prepare. It looks to me like a burger and a cheeseburger. Okay, so let's have a little go. Oh no, there's Tutorial Robot. Hello, Tutorial Robot. How are you? Uh, be warned about Tutorial Robot. He's all sort of retro and adorable. I think he wants to destroy humanity <laughs> from the Tutorial Missions. I suspect he's, uh, his intentions might not be entirely good and he does want to destroy all humans. But there we go. The time has come. Oh, there we go. The reign of mankind's hunger <laughs> is about to end. Here is our first kitchen. It's empty now, but think of the potential. Here's the plan. We scale up quickly, opening numerous kitchens and serving more complex meals as our technology improves. We gain the trust of the public, get some coverage, becoming a popular choice. Then, when everyone is eating our food, well, you'll just have to wait. Are you going to destroy humanity at that point? <laughs> you probably are. Let's start simple. Offering a cheeseburger and a plain burger. After all, we know we can... Oh, no, don't say we can easily produce these. <laughs> we can produce these. Now we just need to test them on the public and make sure they taste as satisfactory as they look. I'm sure they will taste utterly, utterly adequate. Yes. Okay. All right, there we go. So here, he's gone. And now we are indeed on our own. So a little tutorial robot has gone away. And here we go. So this is our kitchen. And that up there is the restaurant. That's where people will go and order some stuff. And we need to get the whole process working in here to deliver cheeseburgers and regular burgers onto this little platform here. And we've got a load of tools to do that. We've got assemblers and order eaters and dispensers and grills and all that kind of stuff. Really, the first place we need to go is just here on this sort of little sort of card thing because this gives us recipes. So let's look at the recipe for a plain burger first. So to make one plain burger, you need a burger bun and then you need to get a raw patty and cook it and put it in the bun. That makes sense. I can do that. I understand that. So that's not complicated. Now I'm going to go out on a limb and say the cheeseburger is very similar but there's cheese in it. Let, let's just see. Let's just have a look. Oh, lo and behold, there is some cheese. So yes, we take a burger bun, we get a raw patty and cook it, and we get some cheese and we slice it, put it all together, and there we go. We've got a lovely, lovely cheeseburger to eat. Okay, so we know what we need, and it, that's not complicated, really. That's not that complicated. So now we just need to get that built. So we're going to need some machines. The assemblers or we'll take all the ingredients that are put into them and turn it into an actual finished product. So if you put into the assembler a uh, cooked patty and a burger bun, it will turn it into a finished plain burger, put it on a plate and dish it out the other side of the assembler. So we need a couple of these. We need two of these, I would say. So uh, assemblers can only build one thing at a time. So it can't build multiple ingredients. So we can have one assembler building the cheeseburgers, the other assembler building the plain burgers. We're going to put them over here. We might as well put them as near as we can to the exit thing. So we'll have one there and one there. And then we'll set the top one 
to be cheeseburgers only because, and it, I'm, I'm not really sort of too bothered, really, but because the cheeseburg cheeseburgers require the cheese. So they require one extra ingredient. So in theory, they might be a little bit slower to produce. So if we put it nearer the sort of the exit hatch, if you like, then it might speed that up a tiny bit. I don't think it'll make that much difference. Uh, this one here, this one can just make plain burgers okay and now we need to get ourselves some arms we need robot arms so there's two types there's dumb robotic arms which just swivel about and pick up anything or there's smart robotic arms which you can sort of program a little bit and tell them to only pick up certain things but for the minute we don't really care we just need to get some robotic arms to reach over take the food out of the assemblers and put them onto a conveyor belt we don't care that's the only thing that's going to come out of these the only thing that's going to come out is either cheeseburgers or plain burgers so uh, these things let's just check so they finished yeah so finished dishes come out on the left hand side so there's two outputs there you can see the little sort of pointy sort of things there so we want to put a robot arm just there and a robot arm just there so when the food is done it will come out there and then we obviously want a conveyor belt then push that up there up there and out it goes into there so that will do for the end of the process. So we've got the machines that can actually make the food, arms that can take the completed food out of those machines and deliver them to the restaurant. Now we've just got to do the rest of the complicated bit of actually cooking it all. I think let's start with ensuring that both of these things can have burger buns. Let's make sure they've both got the bready element. So we need dispensers for this. So dispensers kick out everything. They dispense all the ingredients. They'll dispense the cheese and the raw patties and the bread and all that kind of stuff. So we need a couple of those. We also do need some dumb robotic arms because these things need uh, robotic arms to put the food into them. So let's go for one there and one there. So each assembler now has a robotic arm assigned to it, which is nice. And they will pick up from just here. So if we then put a conveyor belt just there and a conveyor belt just there, Anything that is then on that conveyor belt, that arm will go, oh, lovely, I'll pick that up. It'll swivel it round. It'll put it into our assembler. So now let's get ourselves a dispenser. If we put one there and then configure that to only dish out burger buns. So that thing is going to dispense burger buns onto there, onto the conveyor belt. The robot arm can go, ah, there is a burger bun there. It'll swivel around, pick it up and put it over here and put it into the assembler where it's going to wait for other ingredients. Obviously, it only, only needs two to make the plain burger. So I think that looks pretty good. So let's do that up there as well. So get another dispenser, put that there and say, you only also dispense burger buns. That's fine. So they can both make burger buns. That is good. And now we need to get other bits and bobs. So the one across the top is going to need cheese. It's going to need cheese, so we're going to dispense some cheese, but then, because it has to be sliced cheese, we need to run it through a food processor. So we need to make sure that it can be processed. So we can get ourselves a dispenser. So let's say we put a dispenser just there and said, okay, you make some cheese. Uh, the cheese is going to come out onto the conveyor, and it's going to go to just here, and then get picked up by there. So we can't have it going that way round. So how about we have it going like that, and then we have the food processor. So say, produce cheese. There we go, block of cheese. Send it to the processor, chop it up into little bits, and then come down here onto the conveyor belt. We'll flip that going to up and that going to there. So the cheese can come out, gets chopped, goes up there, can get picked up by this arm put into here. So that kind of deals with the bread and the cheese side of things. Now we need to do the grilling bit. And this is where it could get a bit tricky because I only want one electric grill. I imagine the, yeah, look at that power consumption. We have that power limit at the start of 500 wattage hours, whatever it was. Um, so we only really want one of these. I don't want to put two of them down. We probably could very easily put two down and just go, there you go. That makes the uh, patties for the regular burgers. That makes the patties for the cheeseburgers. Hooray. But it's not very efficient. And this game is all about efficiency. And goodness knows I'm not the best at it, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try my darndest to make this at least <laughs> vaguely efficient. So we need one of these put down. So we need one, say, just there. Let's pop that just there. And then we're going to need some arms. Thing is, so yeah, well, that's not going to work. I, th I was thinking we could force it to just there. So we go, right, burgers go that way for the cheeseburgers. Burgers go that way for the uh, plain burgers. But that's not going to work like that, is it? That's not, that's not great. Do you know what? If we move that back and get ourselves a conveyor belt, put that into there, and then we want to get some smart arms. So we're going to have a smart arm just there. And that thing is going to operate straight. Yes, it's going to look forward and backward. But we don't want it to grab anything. We want it to grab 
cooked patties off of the grill. So that thing is going to look behind it and grab a cooked patty and put it onto here. And then we want to do the same for one just, oh, do it all. Oh, no, because that's not going to work either. Yes, this is what I mean. You need to rejig everything around. You need to keep sort of redesigning it as you get on with stuff. So yeah, if I was going to say we could put one here, but then that's going to turn it around and put it into that place. Ah, hang on. How about we move that to there? And then we have our other smart arm coming in and going that way, say. Configure that to only accept cooked patties. And then go OK. And then have a conveyor belt going there that then forces the cook patties up there, then that way, and then the dumb arm can put it into here. So now we've got that done. So now we need to make sure that we can dispense onto here. And I think we're going to need a robot arm to put it onto the grill. So that there can dispense raw patties. Lovely. And then we need a dumb arm. We don't need a clever one. It just needs to pick up anything. To then grab the patties that are coming out of here and put them onto there to cook. So that's kind of a process sorted. So we can press start now and we'll see what happens. We can give it a go. So there we go. So we can see the energy being used is ticking up because all these machines are switched on. But look, the cheese is coming out and it's being chopped. The burger thing is producing a burger bun every five seconds. That thing is grabbing stuff. It's grabbing the processed cheese. This thing is grabbing the, uh, is grabbing the uh, cook patties and putting them on there. But as you can see, we've got no orders. Nobody's ordered anything yet. So we're just producing loads and loads of food for seemingly no reason. We're just producing absolutely no food, uh, no stuff for no reason. There's no point because nobody's placed any orders. So this food is just going to waste. And we've got an ingredients limit. So at the minute, we're on 28 out of 40 ingredients. There we go. So now I've got an order for a plain burger, which will probably deliver pretty quickly. But we're going to breach this limit just here. So we need to stop that. We need to control this a bit better. We need to only switch things on when they are required. And the order reader does that. So uh, we can put them anywhere, really. I don't think it makes any difference. So if we put an order reader just there and say, OK, right, right click you. So when somebody from the restaurant orders either a cheeseburger or a plain burger, let's connect it to the grill and say it's on while the order is pending. So when there's no orders pending, don't have the grill on. Switch the grill off, please. We don't need it on. That's fine. And also, when somebody orders a cheeseburger or a plain burger, we could also... Oh, no, we don't want to do that with that, do we? We could actually switch these things on or off. So when somebody orders a plain burger or a, or a cheeseburger, we can go to the assemblers and do the same with them. So on, while an order is pending for a cheeseburger or a plain burger, but we need to switch them off, when you know, there's nothing going on, when there's no orders, switch everything off. We don't need it all switched on. So that thing can control basically power usage. And then we need to figure out how to turn these things, just make them a bit slower because <laughs> they just kept producing stuff like crazy. So you, if we right click you and say, OK, if somebody orders a cheeseburger, we want to produce some cheese. So when, when someone orders a cheeseburger, order one lot of uh, produce, sorry, one lot of cheese. So in there, one cheeseburger order comes through. Say, okay, yep, one cheeseburger order is going to require one bit of cheese. So force that through there. And then also, if someone orders a cheeseburger, we then want to produce one bun. So make one bun over there. So go, yes, please, one cheeseburger bun would be great. And that will do. So that'll go, okay, cheeseburger bun. Ah, right, we need to also do the patties. Ah, right, hang on. Could we, could we say in here when somebody orders a cheeseburger or a plain burger, go to there and dispense one raw patty. Because when somebody orders a burger of either type, they're going to need the meat for it. So, okay. Oh, that's quite good. Oh, that's marvellous news. Okay, that's excellent. And then we possibly need another order reader just here because we've got the money for it. We've got a little bit of money left. And that one can say a plain burger when somebody orders a plain burger uh, connect to that thing, the dispenser of plain burger buns, and create one plain, well, one bun for the plain burgers. And that's it. So I think now that should be way more efficient. So let's have a go at that show. We've got less than 50 grand, so that's quite nice. And when we start, everything should be switched off. Oh, look at that. Our energy usage is hardly going up at all. So we can sit back. It's because the grill isn't on. That thing absolutely eats power. 
that thing chews power up. So uh, we can speed time on a little bit until some people get us some, uh, give us some orders. So we can just sort of sit back. There you go. So they have little sort of uh, thought bubbles above their head. They're like going, I, I love a burger from a place entirely staffed by robots. So now it's switched on. Let's move time on. So that thing is switched on. And our machines are getting on with it. So they have made a cooked patty. And the smart arm has grabbed the cooked patty. Okay. Has it grabbed another cooked patty? Yep. Is this arm doing anything? Is that arm... Oh, hang on a minute. I think we might have a problem with the plain patties. I think this arm here is not playing. Yeah, this arm isn't... We're not getting any patties for the uh, for the plain burgers. This arm isn't playing ball. It's... Hang, right, nope. Stop, stop, stop. Right, this arm isn't happy. Do I need to swivel it round? Is that what I need to do? Because you can change the direction they're working. Yes, yeah, so that's operating in a straight mode. Yeah, maybe I had it the wrong way around, possibly. Okay, right, let's give it another go. So move time on nice and quick and see if that works this time round. So someone will come in, place an order at some point. Yep, so there's some people coming in. Okay, so they've ordered plain burgers and cheeseburgers. Okay, so now that should, I think, pick that up. Yeah, there we go, look. it's. Oh, no, the, the other one stole it. The other one stole it. <laughs> okay, fine. No, there we go. So cooked patty goes on. That's been picked up by there. It goes into here. That thing is assembling the plain burger. It'll pop out onto here on a plate. And then the machine, then the arm grabs it and delivers it over there. So we've got one plain burger done. Ding! So these are all our other orders coming through. So we've got plain burgers, got more cheeseburgers, more plain burgers. So yeah, this is this is going well. This is going well. Now the plain burger, they've been waiting for a little while for the plain burger. And they're getting a bit grumpy about it. But one did just go through. I think we're making another one now, are we? Are we able to make another plain burger? We're waiting for the ingredients. Oh, no, there you go. That's a plain burger going out right now. So we're waiting for ingredients. So that thing now within it has got three burger buns. It's just waiting for the actual... It's just waiting for the patties. It's just waiting for the meat to come through. But this is fine. Another plain burger will go in. So yeah, I think we can speed time on. I think we've got this. We've got just under the amount of energy. Oh, and look at that. 74% efficiency. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Okay, so we ordered, the, uh, we ordered uh, sorry, fulfilled the 10 orders. Lovely. We kept the power usage less than 500. What did we get to? 329. No, we were well under. And we used fewer than 30, uh, sorry, fewer than 40 ingredients because we used 34. Well, that was good. No failed meals. And we delivered 10 and we had an efficiency of 74%. Oh my goodness me. Kitchen report, what does that do? No kitchen events to show. Okie dokie. And right, well, there you go. That was good. Let's move on to the next level. The next level has deployed some awesome punnage. It's called Let Us Begin. Very good. Very good. I like this. I like a good pun. So this looks like we've got to deliver five meals, keep electricity usage under 400 w, and use fewer than 35 ingredients. So the requirements for power and ingredients are less, but we've got to deliver less meals. Okay, right. So let's see what this requires us to do. So, okay. And what are we making? there. What's that? Some sort of sandwich type thing. Those burgers were a success. The public were ecstatically indifferent toward them. Give me feedback such as, yes, it had taste and stop asking me questions. Leave me alone. <laughs> okay. I managed to get this place at a discount rate. Apparently humans are not keen on working in tight spaces. A privilege those stupid machines don't care for. Indeed. Now I know you're thinking, Fellow carbon-based life form, <laughs> you are not a fellow carbon-based life form, fellow converter of complex proteins, what can we do in this limited space? But it turns out we will be able to achieve a lot here. Yes, a lot of dithering, I imagine. We can offer a brand new dish, the BLT sandwich. Oh my goodness, it's a revelation. Pay close attention to the recipe and the required steps. The space looks limited, but you will easily fit in the required machines. Remember, efficiency will be key in our continued partnership. Okay, so a BLT. Oh, there's many ingredients. So bread is going to have to be sliced. Uh, and we need two lots, obviously, for the top and the bottom of a sandwich. A tomato needs to be sliced. Lettuce is just straightforward. And then bacon also needs to be cooked. So we need to cook the bacon on a grill. And then the tomato and the bread. And the bread is going to be interesting, isn't it? Because the bread needs to be... Uh, oh, no, we're producing bread slices. Okay, no, I thought we might have to run it through the process. But no, so we're getting bread slices. So the bread slices and the bacon strips will go on the grill... A tomato slice will go through a slicer and then we've got to combine it all at the end. Okay, okay, I'm sure we'll be fine. And space really is limited, isn't it? Wow, it's not very big at all. So as we did before, we can always sort of do this. I think, do we want to put that there? Let's put that there like we did before. We'll drop that in. That can be our maker of BLTs. 
finish dishes on the left hand side and we will get ourselves our dumb arm and that can just sit there and put the meals onto that thing and out they go brilliant so we've got kind of that bit sorted we need to get everything else crammed into this little area okay i mean is that even going to be remotely possible do we need to possibly move this round uh, that's no, that's not going to work at all, is it? Let's leave that there for now. So let's see what we need to do. So what was it again? Uh, we need to get bread, tomatoes, lettuce, and bacon. Okay, so we're going to need four dispensers for four different things. So if we just put four dispensers down, we can sort of move them around as we want. So that one is going to be dispensing bacon strips. Uh, that one is going to dispense the bread. This one can deal with the lettuce. And that one can deal with tomatoes. Okay, so there are the four of those in. Also, yeah, we can move these round as we want. They're not going to stay there because that would be stupid. That looks like a terrible idea at the moment. So now what do we want to do first? Maybe we pick out the easy things. So let's get ourselves another dumb arm. I just put it just there. That's fine. And then if we get ourselves a little bit of conveyor, and just go there and there. And then the lettuce is dead easy. The lettuce can just go just there. The lettuce can go out onto there and it can go, yep, yeah, there you go. Dumb arm can pick it up, put it in there. We don't need to do anything with the lettuce. Uh, now, the bread, that will move out of the way. And bacon out of the way. The tomato needs chopping. So we can do that. So let's put that there and then we'll process it like so. So now the tomato is done. So we've got the tomato side, we've got the lettuce side done and they will feed into there quite nicely. So now we want to figure out a way where we can use one grill in this limited space <laughs> in order to make sure that yeah, we want to keep down our sort of power usage. So one grill is going to be required. We're going to need to grab a grill. Ah, yeah, now this is this is very tight for space, isn't it? This is very tight for space indeed. So we want a couple of smart arms around that. So one to grab the cooked bread, the toast, as, as other people call it. Cooked bread yeah, equals toast, I've learned that. And then the cooked bacon. So we'll put a couple of arms around that, but that's clearly not going to work like that. That's, that's a bad way of doing things. So how about we change this round a little bit, have that going to there, that going to there, that going to there and then we'll have conveyor belt going up and that conveyor belt going up so that gives us more room to play with on this side and that arm could go there we'll put the grill there we'll put the other arm uh does it have to be facing that way i think it faces that way so like that and another conveyor belt just there so the tomato can still make its way the lettuce can still make its way and then the bread can make its way, and so can the bacon. So we need to do that. So operation mode, right. You, you can be the bacon strips one. You can be the bacon strips machine. Well done. And you, you can be... Uh, no, we'll have operating straight at the minute. You can be the bread... It's not bread slice, though, is it? It's cooked bread slice. Uh, where's the cooked bread slice? There it is. Toasted bread slice. Okay, so that can pick up the toast which is lovely. And then we need these things to start dispensing onto. So wow, now how are we going to do this? So we put you there and you just there, but then we're going to need a robotic arm. Hang on. So if we have a conveyor belt going up like that, and then a dumb arm, a dumb arm that's just going to sit like that possibly, that's going to grab whatever gets dished out into there. So bacon and the bread, it will put out onto there. Go, there you go, it's on the grill. Those things will take off the things on the grill. Now, if you don't have the um, the smart arms here and here, then if you just have dumb arms, they would do exactly as they're supposed to do. So a bit of, uh, a bit of uh, raw bacon would come out. This dumb arm would put the raw bacon onto there. And one of these dumb arms would go, oh, there's a thing. I'm going to pick up the thing and take it off the grill before it's cooked. So that's why you have to have the smart arms. <laughs> Otherwise, it just doesn't work. So I think... We might be okay with that. So now we want to get our order reader in. So just pop it in the corner. That'll do. So we want to make sure that, let's say, when someone does a BLT, let's do that and let's switch the grill on. So on while order is pending. Yes. And we'll do the same for that. Because I like that idea. So while well, that's on while order is pending. And then a BLT, let's then say, okay, so when someone orders a BLT, we want to dispense one bit of lettuce in fact do you know what let's do this on the other one we'll have another order reader that can be sort of power management so that can say only do that do we can, can does it connect to that 
Oh, the food processor uses power as well. Yeah, only switch that on when it's pending. Absolutely, yeah. How, how far does that go? Can you connect to, like, the robot arms? Yes, you can. Oh, crikey. Wow. So, yes, you can connect it to anything. Can you connect it to uh, bits of bits of conveyor? Yes, you can. Oh, wow. Right. So, they can control anything. Right. Okay. But at the minute, uh, when there's no orders, the food processor, the grill, and the assembler will be switched off. Okay. So, now, we've got another order reader, uh, which we just pop just there, whatever. And that thing, when somebody orders a BLT, we want to make sure that we've got ourselves one piece of lettuce. We want to make sure we've got ourselves one piece of tomato, like so. And that will go through and get chopped. And then we want to go, go and say, right, now we want to get one bit of bacon. So one lot of bacon strips, which we will then obviously cook. And then this thing here, we want to make two. We want two bread slices, don't we? Because, yeah, perform it twice. So, say, yeah, when someone orders a BLT, yeah, they need they need both bits of bread to make the sandwich. So, okay. So, do that. Is this going to work? I suspect maybe some of the arms are the wrong way around, but we're under budget. Just, but we're under budget. That's good. We've not got loads of stuff. We've got one, two, three, four, five conveyor belts that we put in, and that is it. So, yeah, uh, let's give this a go. Let's see if this works. So, good. Everything is switched off. So things are not using power. This is good. Yeah, look at that. We're on five out of 400. So we need some people to come by. Can someone please be hungry? Order some food. We're using up loads of power and no one's come in. Right. Someone's ordered a BLT. Right. The lettuce. Oh, no, look. that. <laughs> the I think the dumb arm might be the wrong way. Around. Hang on. Hang on. The dumb arm, I think, is possibly, is possibly the wrong way around. Right. Hang on. Let me try that again. Okay, this should be better. This should be more successful. There we go. So the dumb arm has come and grabbed that and that. So yeah, it, I, you kind of put the arms on backwards. You put the target of the arms on... Uh, you sort of put the target, if you like, in front of the arm. I kind of think you should put the arms this way. In my mind, you go, well, I'm going to be picking stuff up from here. So the arm points that way and they turn around and put it there. But no, you do it the other way round. So there we go. Look, they're doing the bread slicing. Have we met any orders? Oh, no. No, no, we're just... Hang on, what's going on? What? Hang on, I, I wasn't really watching that. We just sent out some bacon, didn't we? Did we just chuck out some actual bacon <laughs> without anything on it? Uh, yeah, we're not delivering bacon. No, we're just we're just shipping bacon. Hang on, that's that's clearly not right. Hang on, stop. <laughs> yep, I figured out what I'm doing wrong. I am taking out the raw bacon strips. No, 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 cooked bacon strips, crispy bacon strips. So yeah, this thing here, when the bacon strips were going onto the grill, this thing was just going, brilliant, bacon strips, yeah, I'll have those. So yeah, that was what the problem was. And that's why they were making their way through into the assembler. And the assembler was going, I don't want these. What are these? I'll just chuck them over here, put them onto the side. And then this arm was going, oh, the thing, I'll pick up the thing and chucking it over here. So now we should have a bit more joy. So let's speed time on. Let's get somebody in. Come on, somebody order a BLT. They're delicious. They're made entirely by robots. Okay, let's watch. So they've got an order in, bread slice, and bacon goes on. Where's that second bread? There you go, there's a the second bread slice. Okay, so now the bacon is cooking. Right, brilliant. That is cooked bacon now. That's good. So we've got one lettuce, one tomato slice in there. And now we need ourselves the cooked bread. Oh, no, right, hang on. There's something wrong with this arm. This, ah, no, I know what the problem is. I know what the problem is. That arm is, the, is delivering in the wrong way. So the operation mode is currently straight. But straight behind it is a brick wall. So they're never going to take the toast off. Uh, that's to its left. Is that right? Uh, no, no, it's right then. Yeah, because they kind of face backwards. It's a bit weird. But um, okay, so to its right. Okay, right. Now, now, let's give it another, another go and see if we have any more joy with that now that I'm doing it right. So again, we're still pretty good for energy. We're using a lot, sort of a lot less energy than we could be if everything was uh, obviously switched on. So let's see. Bacon goes on. Bread goes on. Another bit of bread goes on. So we've got two bread slices that are nicely toasted. The bread, the bacon has gone. And there we go. Look, right. He's taken the toasted bread off. And that one's taken the toasted bread off. And it's going into there. And a BLT is being produced at this very second. There we go. It takes a little while to produce a BLT. A little while to produce. But we'll get there. So there we go. It picks it up. It goes over there. And in it goes. And I think we're probably making another one. I oh, know. Waiting for another bread. I oh, know. There we go. It's making another one. So what have we got in storage already? I know that a bit of tomato has gone in and a bit of lettuce as well. So I think we're we making another one straight away. Yeah, we are. Yep, yeah, I think that is pretty good. I think that's a pretty good way around of doing things. So we're now, the only thing is, oh no, we've only got to deliver five dishes. 
and we're not even at half power. So yeah, let's just speed it on. Let's just speed things on. I think that is pretty good. I think that is about as, as efficient as we're going to get. And we need one more and we're done. An efficiency of 71. I think this is way higher than I was expecting that I could ever produce. I thought we'd be like, efficiency 30% and I'd be going, nah, yeah, it's fine. But no, 71%. So we've, all, we've uh, fulfilled the five orders. Power usage was way less than 400. And, oh, look at that. Use fewer than 35 ingredients. We use 34. It still meets your demand. So there we go. That's brilliant. Okay, so we've done let us begin. Good pun. Uh, on to the next. On the campaign screen, there's like these little sort of news snippets, which I think are giving us a glimpse into what's happened. So here it says new restaurant to open. Revolutionary automated fast food diner to open in town next week. And then if we go down here past the ones we've not unlocked. There's one here that says police investigate break in at lab. Years worth of research have been stolen from a high tech research lab. Property of international baking machines. So somebody broke in and nicked the robots and now they've kind of become sentient and they're making their own <laughs> restaurant empire. So yeah, I like that. I'm not going to go down anymore. Kind of, there's probably lots. Yeah, I'm just going to sort of, I'll keep them for later. I don't want to sort of uh, ruin the story if we're supposed to sort of uh, uncover it as we go down this the screen. I'll uh, find out more as we go on. But yeah, there's a little blueprint for the order reader as well, which is quite good. So now the next one I've got is doubling down. So deliver 20 meals. Keep electricity usage under 1,450 and uh, use fewer than 95 ingredients. Okay, that seems like a lot. That's certainly bigger in terms of all our sort of numbers than we've had on the previous levels. And we've got a budget of $55,000 and recipes to prepare. That looks like a cheeseburger with something else on it. Doesn't it? it looks like a slightly bigger cheeseburger and that looks like a hot dog of some description. So, okay, let's start. Oh, hello there, tutorial, evil, sinister, world taking over over. Our continued success has led me to acquiring this space here at this local air show. Having access to large crowds is all part of my uh, business plan, in quotes. <laughs> Why is it in quotes? Crowds arrive in droves to spectacle at machines inefficiently generating lift. It's beyond me, but it's an opportunity we simply cannot afford to miss. Okay, today we offer not one but two entirely new dishes. The double bacon burger. Oh, it's bacon, right, okay. And the plain hot dog, my goodness. That double bacon burger requires double the amount of cheese and patties to produce than our previous cheese-based burger exploits, so set the order reader accordingly. Now, I've just booked a passenger ride in a propeller-driven aeroplane, so I must be off. My spontaneity circuit is at optimal performance today. <laughs> okay, you sinister thing. Uh, right, okay, let's take a look at what we need to do. So a double bacon burger, one bun, okay, that's good, two cheese slices, two cooked patties, one lot of bacon strips. Oh my goodness me. Oh crikey. And a plain hot dog. And that's nice and simple. I like that. Hot dog bun plus cooked hot dog equals plain hot dog. Right. Got that. So it's going to be the double bacon burger that is going to be the tricky one. Because that's going to need, it's going to need two slices of cheese. So we're going to need to get that done twice. But it's this. We're going to have to cook patties. That's two of them and bacon as well. So the grill is going to be very busy. It's going to have bacon on it and patties and hot dogs. Or do we have... Now, there you go. This is where it starts getting interesting, doesn't it? Do we have two grills, one for patties, because there might... If someone's got two orders in for one of these double bacon burgers, that's four patties. That's the grill full. So maybe we have two grills, one for cooked patties and one for bacon strips and hot dogs. Oh, and the space we've got isn't brilliant either. Look at that. It's a relatively small space. Right, let's do what we always do then. Let's get the assemblers in. We'll put two of those in. Uh, it might be that we need to adjust these at some point. But right now, let's just get them down. So that can make double bacon burgers. That one can make the plain hot dogs. Lovely, lovely. And then we'll use our dumb arms and go right one there, one there, grab a conveyor belt and up it goes. Okay, so that's nice and straightforward. We've got that bit done. <laughs> this bit is down and it's fine. So in terms of the actual hot dog, why don't we get a dumb arm there and put a dumb arm there as well. And then can we get a conveyor belt going to there and we could just get a dispenser that just goes bosh like that. And then we can say, right, you make a hot dog bun. Okay. So that will make a hot dog bun. That can go into there. Yay, hot dogs. Okay, so we've got that. That's all fine. We haven't got any other sort of fancy gadgets yet. We've not got anything new. So it's still all going to be the same sort of thing. The only thing is, I don't know how we're going to get... If we have one grill... I'm, I'm trying to think of how we can do it with one grill. But we're going to need to have one grill with patties and bacon 
and hot dogs on it. And I don't know how that's going to work. What we can do though is at least we can put that there and we'll get another dispenser. We'll pop that there and that one can make the burger bun. So we know that the bread side of things is done. So at the minute, we, we're just delivering bread. <laughs> Would you like a hot dog bun or a burger bun? It's very bread. It's very carb heavy diet at the moment, but that should be fine. So now it's just getting the rest of this done. So in terms of hot dogs, we'll probably, re it's, it's simple. We could easily do it. We go electric grill, Bosch, put some hot dogs on it, put it onto there, sorted. But that's just a bit lazy, isn't it? So let's say if we drop down electric grill just there, we're going to need a smart arm to come from it to say, right, grab one lot of things. Right, hang on, hang on. So we have a smart arm that says, get patties. A smart arm that says, get uh, bacon. And a smart arm that says, get hot dogs. Okay, so let's configure you. So you grab hot dogs, so cooked hot dogs. Yes, please, you do that. You grab cooked bacon so yeah we, we know now crispy bacon or whatever it is where is it crispy bacon strips not the regular bacon and you can grab yourself you need to operate to your right i think it is and you need to grab yourself the cooked patties so the actual burgers so i think it's to the right yeah okay so you're going to deliver things to the right so if we then go right conveyor belt so conveyor belt to there that conveyor belt can go up so once you've got the thing off there, so which one were you again? You're the crispy bacon strips arm. So you'll grab the bacon strips, put them onto there. You'll grab the patties, hopefully, and put them onto there. You'll grab the hot dogs and put them down here. So this needs a place to go. So it'd be nice if it could just feed straight back that way. It'd be nice if it could go back that way. Ah, but what I haven't factored in is cheese. I've not included the cheese just yet. And this is going to need some cheese. Yeah, we can't do it quite like this. This is not going to work. We need to move this over a little bit, I suspect. Or move it down or something. Because that is also going to need cheese. Now, how can we best do that? We could get ourselves a dispenser just there. So say there. I put a dispenser just... Oh, that's going to have to cross in the way of the hot dogs. And I don't want to do that. So a dispenser there. Say, right, you, you're delivering cheese. Enjoy that. Food processor. Let's get a food processor. You're chopping the cheese up into lots of bits. And then we have ourselves a conveyor belt that goes up like that. And then that can feed onto there. But then what's that conveyor belt doing? That conveyor belt is largely redundant. So we don't really need that one. So uh, how do we get rid of it? Then we press delete. There we go. So that gets rid of that. So that means we'll get some cheese coming in. And then we'll get bacon and burgers and the bread. So that's all okay. So then we need to figure out the hot dogs because that's now going to be very, very inefficient for the hot dogs because they're going to have to go all the way round there. And that's just not ideal. How about, how about we move that down a bit like that and then we turn that up there. We put that there so the cheese can just come straight out and then we can still maintain this thing here. In fact, can we have that going like that and then a conveyor going up like that? And then you're going to need a conveyor going to there. So you're going to get the burgers and they're going to go over there. You're going to get the bacon. It's going to go over there. You're going to get the hot dogs and it's going to go that way. The only thing is that's still quite far away. That's an awful lot of conveyor belts that we're going to have to use. So yeah, look, one, two, three and four conveyor belts. I don't like that. That's too far. That's too much distance. That's probably really bad for our power consumption. Although, to be fair, we've still got a load of money left. The only thing we haven't got is dispensers yet. We've got nothing dishing out anything. Hang on, let's get those down and see what we're left with. So, we need to get ourselves bacon strips. We need to get ourselves... Uh, where is it? Uh, we need to get ourselves uh, raw hot dogs. And we need to get ourselves raw patties. Okay, so now we've got those three in as well. Now we can figure out exactly how this is going to work. Oh my goodness me. Right, this, this is getting complicated. Okay, if this is the hot dog arm, this is our hot dog arm. So we want it to go just here. Ideally, in an ideal world, that would go just there. So let's move you out of the way. Put the grill just there. Okay, and then just here, this. Hang on, let's get that one then. So we'll put that there. So that's the, what arm are you? You're the bacon strips arm. That's fine. And then you just here... You are going to be, you know, going to twist you round a bit then. Like that, possibly? Is that going to work? So then you're going to deliver to the right, and you're the burger arm. 
So we'll put you like that and you like that. In fact, we might want the burger arm. We might just swap them round. Let's put you there and switch your operation round to straight behind you because um, you're going to take longer. There's two lots of burgers. I'd rather have them over that way so it's a bit quicker. And then you can go like that. You can operate to the right. You can dispatch everything out to the right. So you should have a right arrow. Lovely. And then get the conveyor belt like that and see if that works. And now that thing can deliver straight. Yeah, they could just have they can just have this. They could just say, right, OK, there can be a conveyor belt that comes along like that and that and then up and up. In fact, no, we don't even need that one there. No, get rid of that. Get rid of that one. Don't don't do that with it. Get rid of that in its entirety. Go there, there and there and then go there, there and Let's move that over, actually. In fact, the hot dog won't go on the right because it's near to where the hot dogs are going to go. So let's put that there. Bake in the middle. Burgers. In fact, let's put the burgers in the middle. It's quicker. There's less different distance for them to travel. So the hot dogs will come out and go onto there, get cooked, get picked up by hot dog arm, go to here, get put into here, get combined with the hot dog bun. Then the bacon strips will go in. The burgers will go in and they'll get put onto there. That's the cheese bit, which is good. Is there any way we can make that? more efficient i'm not entirely sure there is i don't think there is i don't think there's anything we can do with that to make it more efficient i don't think we can do can we remove any of these bits ah there might be hang on can we get get rid of that get rid of that and then just turn that round turn that round there we go that's using less energy and it's still going on to one conveyor belt bit ah no hang on we need an arm we need an arm yes of course so we need to do that and then we need to get ourselves a dumb arm to just grab anything. Just grab anything. Who cares what it is? So there we go. Yeah, so we need that in anyway. Okay, that was good. That would have been, <laughs> that would have been a, a somewhat embarrassing omission there. Because that just wouldn't have worked. All the food would just have slammed into the side of the grill. But in terms of this here, I don't think we can do anything better. Because if we want to put everything onto one grill, you need to have what's it, the three exits for the three different types of food. And we're not going to be able to do that any better than we have done. So uh, let's now get ourselves the, um, where is it, the order readers in. So let's put one up in, I don't think it matters where the order readers go. We'll put one there. This can be our control one. So whenever anybody orders a double bacon burger or a hot dog, we will control that thing. And we will say it's on, one order is pending. And that thing can be switched on, one order is pending. And the other assembler can be switched on while an order is pending. So when there's no orders pending, there's no need for them to be on. And then... What about then, if somebody orders, are they all the same now? Yeah, so there's nothing that's common between them now. Okay, so that'll have to do for that. So that's that order reader done. Okay, so that's that one sorted. And now, we want one for, how much are they? Five grand. We've got to spend less than 55 grand. I think we'll be absolutely fine. So if we put one just there and say, all right, when somebody orders a plain hot dog, in fact, if we're doing a plain hot dog, let's move it down to here. So uh, if somebody orders a plain hot dog, then we would like ourselves, we want one bun. Oh, why do I keep going out of it like that? And then we want uh, one hot dog. So dispense one raw hot dog, please. And that will do. And then we'll get the final order reader. This could be the burger order reader. So when somebody orders a double bacon burger, we want to say, connect to that. And with cheese, we want two lots of delicious cheese. So two lots of cheese. Uh, we also want two lots of those. So two patties. Yes. And one lot of bacon strips. Yes. And one burger bun. Okay. Right. I think that looks good. If a little bit untidy with cables. But okay. I'm sure that's all fine. So now let's give it a go. And just see what happens. We're underneath the limit for money. So, you know, it's good. Uh, power usage, energy is very low. Energy is low. Most things are switched off. It'd be good if we could have switched off the... Hang on a minute. Has that got capacity? Uh, yeah. Oh, do you know what? Well, anybody orders one of those, we might as well switch off the, um, the food processor. There's no point having it on. It's not doing anything. So there you go. We've improved efficiency. Look, already that does take quite a bit. The food processor does take up quite a bit, but okay, there we go. Right, so let's get an order in. Somebody come and place an order at the air show. Uh, there you go. Oh, someone's come in. Someone's come in. Right, so things are in action. They've ordered a double bacon burger. So things are going in. Right, so the cheese has gone in. So what are we waiting for? 
Uh, that is waiting for, it's just burger bun, that's no use. Can you tell me what they're waiting for? So we've got one burger bun, two cheese slices, we've got crispy strips, we've got ourselves all sorts going on in there now, and in goes two cooked patties. This is great, so it's making lots of things. Okay, and now there's another double bacon burger order in, so that's being done. The hot dog is waiting. What are we waiting for in terms of the hot dog? Uh, oh, we're waiting for it to be cooked. Okay, yeah, well, that, that would make sense. <laughs> I don't think serving a raw one would be very good. So, okay, so that's making another hot dog. We've got ourselves another hot dog ordered. Are we able to do that? Oh, that's that one. That's that one just going straight out. Oh, th this is working quite well. Okay, I think that's fine. I think we'll see this tick up quite nicely. Once we actually get all this stuff done. Yeah, all these orders are coming in. But yeah, look, now it's going bing, 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 bing. Yeah, well, I think we'll be fine. We'll be absolutely fine to get these 20 done. So, um, yeah, let's just sit back and watch. Although, to be fair, what are we on? Nearly on 10. I oh, know we're nowhere even near half the energy used. Nowhere even near. I think we'll be absolutely fine. I think they look very comical when it's going so fast. <laughs> yeah. ah! And then the lazy ones over here. This dumb arm here, just sort of there going, yeah, whatever. I've moved one hot dog today. I'm exhausted. Yeah, we'll be absolutely fine. We're only just around half energy. And we've got... 16 out of 20 dishes done. So yeah, this is fine. It's all looking good. We've got ourselves a few more ingredients to use as well. And we are done. Efficiency 90%. Oh yes, I am I am the king of automated restaurants. Wow. 20 orders fulfilled. Power usage way less than that. Use fewer than 95 ingredients. Yes, we use 90. Okay, yeah, that that is. That was great as well. Well well done us. I'm very proud with how that went. 90% efficiency. Quick everybody, take screenshots of this, print them out and frame them. The Geek Cupboard did a 90% thing. Ah, the campaign has branched. The campaign mode has branched off. So we can either carry on the campaign and do street food, or we could take on Burger Frenzy, which is an optional level down here in the yellow. Okay, I like that. That's good. I like a little element of choice. That's very nice. And do you know what? We will do one or both of those levels next time out because we're going to finish up with Otomo Chef for now but we are absolutely coming back to this. We're going to do some more of this. I'm not done with this game yet. I want to get some more challenging things in. I want to get a sort of evil robot tutorial face to give me some more machines because surely we're going to get some more gadgets and gizmos in our kitchen at some point because so far it's been, I was going to say plain sailing. It's not been plain sailing, but yeah, we've had an easy ride of it and I just want to get things a little bit more complicated. Although to be fair, we have done quite well. Two efficiencies of 70%, one efficiency of 90%, which is brilliant, which is entirely unexpected. That surprised me, I'll be completely honest. Because <laughs> that's not that's not like me when I play these games. Normally it's like efficiency 10%, but you know what? At least you tried kind of thing. So yeah, I'm very pleased with how we've done. And um, yeah, we're coming back just because I want, I want to play more and I want to see what shiny new gadgets and meals and stuff are going to come out in the next levels. But yeah, we're coming back. Do not worry about that. More Otomo Chef will be on the way. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you have, then please please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also please do subscribe if you are not already, just to keep up to date with how we get on here in Automachef. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. <laughs> These people are eating the tables. They're just devouring the tables. They're so hungry. There's no atmosphere at all. Were you sat in the car park? <laughs> are you sure you came to the right place? Mine Nien Stan in brand. <laughs> if you want to order meatballs made of snails, you need to be really certain about this.